Oh my God. One time I was sitting beside a guy on a plane. Tea is coming. <laughs> the tea is hot. <laughs> it's thirsty. Um, I was sitting beside a guy on a plane and he must have been some kind of like fitness, motivational, like. <laughs> you know what I just wrote down? Validated forest fires. We'll get to that later. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm curious to find out. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, everybody. My name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls, and we do a podcast called A Little About A Lot. Um, this is a podcast where we just chat about different things going on in our lives, different topics that interest us. And today's topic is going to be about the pressures of posting. Ooh. Uh, yeah, like, ooh, like that was sarcastic, but really it's like, Oh. Yeah, I meant it in like spooky. Yeah, spooky, like scary, hate it. <laughs> but before we get into that nonsense, let's talk a little bit about our week. <laughs> you can't even say anything close to it or it's confusing. Okay, I'm going to talk about this and we're going to talk about it. And it's going to be the last time that we ever address it. Guys, I always say the name of the podcast wrong a little bit about a lot. So now there's this whole thing. Can I even say the word bit? ever in my life i don't know Mm-mm. so if i say it wrong don't come for me and that's it right click forget this word oh. <laughs> <In> dictionary <laughs> imagine you could do that <laughs> yolo right click delete this oh word <laughs> you don't want to say it anymore okay so what did happen this week well speaking of podcasts we did our live podcast last yeah. week oh my gosh that was so cool it was thank, really fun. Thank you for everybody that came. Thank you for everybody that listened to the live podcast like after the fact because I know it was live, so it didn't sound the same as it always does. Um, but thank you for listening and sticking through that if you did. Yeah, I realized when I was looking back on the vlog from it that it looked more intimidating than it was. Like seeing all these people being that close to the glass box that we were in looked kind of scary, but it didn't feel like that in the moment at all. Yeah. So if you were concerned watching the vlog <laughs> that it was like claustrophobic or anything, it wasn't. It was really fun. And like over 500 people total came in and out throughout, throughout the, night. the night. And we got to meet so many really fun and nice and cool people. It was great. What a great day. That was so fun. And then last night we met even some more viewers because we went to Adeline Morin, our friend Adeline's um, music video premiere yeah unexpectedly i i didn't know who she had invited like yeah was it fans was it other influencers was it like fa- friends family whatever all she the was above like, come <laughs> to my music video premiere it's in the city and when things are close to us and it's friends like of course we want to go and support girls supporting girls <laughs> <laughs> so i was like yeah i'll come i have no idea who would be there um and it was really fun yeah there was a bunch of her fans that i guess had won or she had messaged to come personally to the event mm-hmm and I guess our audience is kind of aligned since we've done a lot of stuff with her. It makes I'll, sense. Yeah, exactly. Even if they aren't a fan of us, they probably just know us because we've been in videos of hers and she's been in videos of ours. Yeah, it was really cool. I didn't expect that at all. But a bunch of people were like, oh, my God, are you the Surrey Girls? Like, so nice to meet you. And that was cool. Yeah. I didn't want to take away from her event, like, in any way at all. So it was, we were keeping it low-key, I guess. <laughs> Super low-key. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the, the song and video was so good. Yeah. So you guys should go check it out. Congrats, girl. It's an awesome song. Good oh, video. man. I want to have some songs and music videos. You know what? Somebody actually messaged, like, DM me today. They were like, can you recreate this song with Amanda Rach Lee? What's a song? We didn't sing it, but it's a video on our channel that we did that you think would apply to Amanda Rach Lee, who does, like, doodles and, um, like, uh, planners planning videos it's she's a, vid- a song on our channel that we didn't sing it's a song on our channel that we didn't sing that's like a diy themed that would work really well for amanda rachley did somebody else sing it i don't know yeah um danny and the washi tape song oh <laughs> i so, never would have thought of that that's a throwback so long ago we like we had a friend who <laughs> was so good at creating like little songs and jingles That we were like, can you sing us a song about washi tape? And then we'll do all these like DIYs to the song. It was perfection. This was back when washi tape was blowing up. It was like changing the DIY game. Everyone had to have it. I know. And Amanda Rach Lee still uses it for (laughs) like planners and stuff. But this is back when people would put it on everything. Put that shit on everything. Yeah, I I never would have guessed that. (laughs) Yeah, wow. 
uh, sorry i was gonna say we need a song because like we're the only youtubers in the world of youtubers that don't have music but like if i want to do music i want to do music do you know what i mean i know like, i'm not a singer oh i'm totally kidding <laughs> we should, like well, I, no never okay got it got it got it yeah what else went on this week um i went camping on the weekend oh, to that to- looked Tobamori. so beautiful yeah that was beautiful it was really beautiful and it's just like something that i fo- like finally can say that i've been to because it's been like i don't know four plus years i've been trying to book a trip to go who booked this trip who was the organizer um well here's what's funny i i tried to be the organizer mm-hmm. all summer slash beginning of fall to get people to go and it just never worked out for whatever reason and then a friend of mine was like i have these two weekends that i'm gonna go camping anyways like do you want to come on either trip and I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Where are you going? And then the one trip, he didn't know exactly where he was going. And I, and I was like, and he was like, oh, why don't we do Tobamore? You keep asking about it. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of his idea, but I was just jumped on it and being like, absolutely, I'm here. What other person besides me and Austin who wants to go, we're going. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's it's hard to plan things as like. It's impossible. Adults, yeah. My bestie, she wanted to go to Nashville for her birthday. And it kind of just like didn't end up happening. It would be like this weekend or next weekend, but it's just like it's hard to plan things with people you really need like I don't even know how you do it because I was like let's have a phone call let's discuss this but especially when things cost money it's so hard to get people to commit even at campsite you have to it costs money for everyone to rent it and it's like I need to know who's coming how many sites we need to book like it's expensive and like yeah people just want to be able to say yes or no at the last minute but you can't do that for things like this or for trips like airplane flights like you can't do it that easily last minute yeah it's tough. I don't have any answers. Maybe we need like a professional life coach planner on and they can tell us how to plan group activities as an adult. How to get other people to do stuff with you. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, do you send an email? Do you send a group text? Like what's happening? And then, do yeah. You follow up. Like there's, I'm sure there's a strategy to get to win this every time. Wow. I don't want to win. I just want to do, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, it felt like a win getting people to come to Tobamore with me. There's a bunch of us that ended up coming, which was great. And it was beautiful. I would recommend. It looks so beautiful. I want to like, I think maybe one of the ideas is like um, trying to do things every year. So it's like every year you do like a girl's trip or like Mm. every year you have a camping trip. So people already know it's going to happen. And like they've planned it in their mind and they didn't just go camping like the week before. So they're like, oh, I can't do that. Or like, you know? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I'm going to try to have more like routine yeah events. routine friend tra- tradition things to kind of like make sure that they happen every year because when they do happen you're like yes that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> um what did you do anything on your end what did i do oh i went to some birthdays oh yeah <laughs> i had some parties my boyfriend was out of town so i was like just doing a lot of me you know i did so much laundry so much laundry just adult things just adult things it was great um and last night we had a nice little date night. We went to a haunted house. Oh, did you go to the Castle Loma? Yeah, so Castle Loma. If you guys don't know, or if you don't know Toronto, it's like this castle in Toronto, which is very weird because our Toronto is not that old by any <laughs> means. And it is not a castle by any means. It's actually like an old like financial person's estate. They just built it to look like a castle. And it is old, don't get me wrong, but I mean just we're not like scotland (laughs) we don't have castles like that um but it is a very cool place we've gone to lots of events there we've been to we've been to an escape room i've been to one with my family there they have just like really cool things going on and they run a haunted house um during halloween and it was pretty good i i don't even know if i've ever been to a haunted house like ever i just it's not something that i'm like yeah that sounds like (laughs) fun let's go do that so um, we did that and it was really fun and it was like raining and just kind of vibey. Was it scary? You said it might be scary. Um, honestly, I didn't find it. I think, I think I got my, like, if somebody was like, oh, it's not that scary. I would have been like, oh, that's pretty scary. Mm-hmm. But since it was like, it is so scary. Like, this is what I was told. And like, I was warned. So then when I was walking there, I was like, that's not that scary. But the key to any haunted house, I think, is making sure that there's lots of space between you and the person in front of you. So that's not ruined. So that's not ruined when people jump out. So even when we showed up to this haunted house, there was a huge line and we were like, what the hell is this? Like we booked our tickets and your tickets have a specific time on it. And I was like, this is so ridiculous. But then I get why it's like, 
a chunk of people show up at this certain time and then they let you in like five mm-hmm. minutes apart mm-hmm. because they don't want people to jump out and scare you. So when you're walking through it, you're by yourself, even though it's like, you know, a thousand people are going to go That's through good. that night. That's the problem I have with um, Halloween Haunt, which is the Halloween party at Canada's Wonderland every yeah. year, which is our amusement park. Yeah. They do like these um, haunted house kind of like maze things you walk through. But it's like a constant flow of people the entire time. I get it. Like the lineups can be like two hours long to get in. So they have to have people going the whole time. But you're literally like toe to the heel of the person in front of you the whole way through. Yeah. And there's no surprise because you just saw the person in front of you get scared. Yeah. And it's so crowded and you're bumping into other people and it's like it's too much. Yeah. So that's a better way to do it. <laughs> Castle I would recommend. And then we went out for some like little wine and noms after. And I met a viewer. Oh, she nice. came up to me at the restaurant. And she was like, I thought that was you. And I was like, it is me. <laughs> it me. It me. <laughs> With my wet hair. Trying to drink some wine. Something I did this week that was more of an adulting thing was I booked a dentist appointment. <laughs> I don't, like our whole office has been on the dentist train. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> like one person was like, oh, I'm going to the dentist. And I think we we're all like, oh, true. Good call. So we all kind of booked dentist appointments. Not me. Oops. Uh, Didn't you book one? You said you did. Yeah, I didn't really. <gasps> I know. Well, Becky sent me the like little thing where you get a this you get a gift certificate, and yeah. Becky's like, I get a gift certificate too if you book it. Um, but I don't know. I just, I they I was asking if they did or- orthodontistry because mm-hmm. I have the permanent retainer that mm-hmm. I need fixed, and they were like, not really, and I was like, oh. And I, it's weird because I already have a dentist, but I just don't like him, and mm. he's not in my new area, new house ting, so. Like, I need a new one. Anyways, I'm working on it. Go on with your story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I booked a dentist appointment, and I haven't been in years, which is bad. But the problem is because, like, all, all my family doctors and whatnot are from, like, my hometown, but I don't live there anymore. Yeah. So to go back there for things like that, it's just, like, such a mission. And I already don't want to go to the dentist. <laughs> so to have to go, like, an hour to do that is even less fun. Can I tell you a quick story off of that? Yes. I don't know if I've said this before, but when I got my first job I remember I was like I need half a day off because I need to go like back to Brampton like again like an hour away to go to my dentist appointment and my boss was just like get a new dentist (laughs) and I was like "Ooh, that is so harsh like I've been going to this dentist since like I didn't even have teeth but um then I was like actually low-key you're right like why am I it's not like I'm moving back to Brampton in a year you know what I mean like this is not a temporary situation I was like I should probably get a new dentist in the city so I don't have to take half a day off of work. That's crazy. So anyways, go on. You got a new dentist. Um, yeah, I got, got a new dentist. Um, and I just didn't realize, like to sum this whole story up, how expensive dentists are. <laughs> like people think, and uh, we like to like flaunt this idea too, that in Canada, healthcare is free. But some things are not free. Dentistry is one of them. Dentistry is one of them. And I think you have to, like, you have to be real bad, like, real far gone on your teeth for it to become free. Like, it has to affect your health, basically. Oh, possibly. Which then I think they will do it, you know, through the hospital. But you don't want to have to be that far gone. (laughs) Um, Yeah, just generally seeing a dentist for regular checkups and fillings and teeth removals and all that, like, costs us money. Um, And if you have insurance through your work, that helps. But still... It costs money. And if you don't have insurance, it's real expensive. Um, and because this was the first, like, appointment I'd gone to in, like, a long time, they needed to do, like, the whole routine Shebang, thing. Yeah. Like, because this was a new place, they needed to do the x-rays. And then they just need to tell you about everything going on and, like, all the things you could do and spend money on. Mm-hmm. And it was just racking up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. There's a reason I haven't gone in this many years because, like, I'm now broke. Thank you. Yeah. And I hate when they're like, oh, like – you're allowed to push back on things. Yes. Like they're like, because you look at the bill after and it has all these lists of different things. And mm-hmm. you're like, do I need x-rays though? And they always say that you do. And then she's like, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. But. I know. So it turns out through this appointment, I likely in my lifetime have to get wisdom teeth taken out. Or oh, you haven't yet? Them. No, I have all of them. Uh, my babies are still in. Ding. Um, but they're like, oh, well, really, it's one of them needs to come out. But then they say, if you take one, you have to take the other. Pretty and then they're like, oh, if you're taking two, you might as well take four. Uh, I'm like, well, that just turned from one teeth removal to all four. And now my cost estimate is like four quadrupled. Times. Four yes. Times, is that right? It's so expensive. Does um, our insurance cover that? They cover some of it, yes. That's good. But still, 
monies, monies. And I'm like, I, they're not causing me pain. I didn't know about this problem. So I like willingly made this appointment to go in to realize I have to spend all this So money. why do you have to get them out if they're not causing you pain? Actually, I don't know. I got mine taken out and they weren't causing me pain. It's because one of my teeth is crooked. Um, which means that there's a little gap under it yeah. with which like things can collect and therefore the likelihood a cavity will form is high. Oh. So they're like, in the future, this is pretty much going to cause you problems, even though it's not now. Right. So pre- you should pre- just deal with it. Preventative. I know. It's silly. Health system loves their preventative care. I know. And then you were talking about ortho stuff too. And I was complaining to the office the other day how like the gap in my teeth is coming back. Yeah. And I found out why. Why? My wire is also broken. Woo! Broken See, wire club. It does move your teeth. I swear, the week that my wire broke, I like had the worst headaches. And I was like, my teeth are moving. And everybody's like, no, you're lying. And I was like, no, literally that wire is holding my teeth into place. Like, it and really now they're is. shifting. I thought it was just like nonsense. I'm like, oh, I can take them off now. My teeth are fine. Don't do that. Don't um, do that. But I didn't even know. I It doesn't feel broken to me at all. Like, yeah. I would not have known if they didn't look at it. Um, and basically they said, I kind of what you're saying, that... Um, if you catch it within like the first couple of weeks, <coughs> it's been it's a couple of weeks. Fixable. <laughs> Shit. And if you leave it too long, it's not fixable. In my case, it's not fixable like easily. Yeah. So my options are to just let it keep doing its thing and see what happens, or to get braces back or Invisalign. And I'm like, <laughs> Invisalign's so expensive. I looked into it before. Yeah, it might be anywhere between twenty five hundred and six grand to fix my teeth if I want to. So sick. Love that for me. Don't go to the dentist. Actually, do go to the dentist. Now. But yeah. Yeah. Because if you went earlier, they'd be like, oh, it's your wire's true, broken actually. on the back. And you're like, oh, weird. We should fix that before I get a gap in my teeth. Cut to now. Yes. Yes. Catch things before they become too expensive. Long story short. Wow. Yay, dentists. Yay, dentists. But no cavities, so holla at me for being good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, moving on to, I guess, the actual topic, unless there's something else we want to talk about. All I wanted to say is booby balls tonight. Oh, I'm yes. really excited. It's always such a fun time. If you guys don't know, booby ball is a ball, a party, like just such a fun party thrown by Rethink Breast Cancer. And it's to raise awareness and money and support um, for young women battling breast cancer. That's kind of like their niche. So we're going to go. We help them come up with some design ideas because... Um, that's like our little role mm-hmm. every year is um, kind of promoting it and um, helping them figure out how they're going to tackle some DIY decor. And Justin found the most perfect Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid costume. Because this year there's always a theme for oh. the party every year. Yeah, and sure. this year the theme is, is, is Un- it into the ocean? Into the ocean because I always say it's under the sea, but it's not. Yeah. Into the ocean. Weird. Which also is the same as under the sea. It is. In a way. I think they're kind of like, under the sea sounds overdone like every prom ever. So they're like, how do we say under the sea, but in like a new way, into the ocean? I like it. Yeah. So um, (laughs) Justin's like, I'm Prince Eric. And then Becky found this like emerald green jumpsuit. Jumpsuit. And I was like, cool, you're Ariel. Like, wear a red wig. (laughs) And then I was like, okay, well, I have a red outfit. I could either be Sebastian or... Or Ursula is more fun because we have a silver wig. Mm -hmm. So it's like definitely not like an exact outfit of Ursula. Um, I'm sure nobody will even get it, but it's a very cool Disney bound, like modern Ursula. Disney bounding. Well, if you're with our squad of Ariel and Eric, people will get it. Yeah. Which will be awesome. And then Daniela is going to be just our general ocean pearl. Yes. She's the pearl. The (laughs) pearl. pearl <laughs> i was gonna take that somewhere it's like the pearl of my eye but you, that's not a saying you can hold her because because <laughs> ariel like just like finds things yeah you're my gadget and gizmo <gasps> you should be a fork <laughs> i was okay guys i literally that's a terrible idea <laughs> i thought of that yesterday but i was like i'm not gonna say that because danielle would be so offended <laughs> it's like you're ariel you're prince eric you're ursula and danielle is a fork <laughs> Uh, can't no you're gonna be beautiful and cute we haven't even gotten into today's topic i'm sorry guys we'll be back after a quick break straight from the pressures of dentistry to the pressures (laughs) of posting we're gonna talk about what it's like to post stuff on youtube and other social media platforms and the pressures that come with that or that may or may not come with that stay tuned (laughs) p.s may p.s spoiler yes do come with that (laughs) um yeah, it's like I, all of a sudden we are in this world where we have to post things online. And 
It is stressful. Okay. I was thinking about this the other day, um, how I feel like there's been a major shift in the online world. So it yeah. started off with, like, you weren't, like, no one really talked about anything. Like, everyone was kind of perfect online. Like, mm-hmm. only show the best photos of yourself. Even when we did videos back in the day, we'd edit out any mistakes ever. Yeah. And make it seem like we knew exactly how to do the DIY and no problems ever came up. And it's great. Nobody's stressed. Nobody's stressed. Um, and then there was slowly a shift where people, we started to include maybe the mistakes. Yeah. And people really liked that. And maybe it felt more genuine. But now I feel like, and I guess I'm thinking more of Instagram for this, but I feel like we're at a point where almost like people are so open about their struggles that it's like expected <laughs> and like rewarded to talk about like being stressed oh, for or sure. overwhelmed. And if you don't talk about those things, people are like, you're not a real person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's gone so much the other way that it's like, are we just being overdramatic? I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Versus being like, <laughs> are we overdramatic? Too under. I don't know. Yeah. Is that interesting? There's definitely, yeah. Especially on YouTube, man. Like they, the videos just used to be so perfect and I feel like we we were never like fake perfect but we wouldn't put in the some of the real stuff I guess Mm -hmm. like we were never we never did like our morning routine and like hey guys this is my perfect life like day in the life whatever like we never did that stuff we were kind of just like here's our DIY we're gonna make something yeah, and it's not because we were trying to hide something. It's because we wanted to be factual. Like, yeah. we're showing you a DIY tutorial. We want it to be, like, right and correct. Yeah. We don't want to show you a mistake because that might throw you off as the person following the tutorial. Yeah. I think the only time we'd, like, say that a, when a mistake happened is if we were, like, we couldn't cut it out in a way. <laughs> yeah. Or if we were, like, oh, we did this, but try this. It would work better for you. All of a sudden, the fabric's, like, a different color because we messed up on the first one. <laughs> You got to have to say something Dude, at that I point. S- I still make mistakes. I was working on a Halloween costume yesterday and I was like, um, I need to restart this whole like collar piece. I mean, I didn't say it in the video because I just like was needed to figure it out. And Claire was like, so should I delete all of that footage? And I was like, yep, I'm just going to start again. I need to reevaluate this. Yeah. And this is where it gets tricky is like finding that line of how much do you share and how much are you honest? Because... People, I think, for the most part, really like when we talk about things that didn't work out, especially if we, like, end up fixing them in the end, right? Um, Those videos do so well when we're, like, we fixed our DIYs, like the terrazzo table. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we get comments from people being like, if you don't know what you're doing, why why did you post this video? Like, you shouldn't be teaching people things if you don't know how to do it. Yeah. And those are hard to read because... Dude, you don't think I have that complex, complex like every freaking day of my life? Like, I'm like, uh, we went to film school, so maybe I know something about film. But also, maybe I know something about film from f- four or five years ago. Is it still relevant? I don't know. And I never went to school for DIY. And I never went to school for construction. Yeah, I'm not a carpenter. I'm not, like, a registered interior designer or any of that. Like, it's all self-taught out of a passion for it. So... Like, I, I get it that I'm not an expert, and it's hard to hear people say that back to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think overall, I mean, for the majority of people like it when we're honest. And and there have been videos like we talked about in the Terrazzo saga, like the very first attempt. If it's too far gone, we won't post it because I get it at the end of the day. Like, we want to be an educational channel. Yeah. And if the, the project is too complicated and we've made so many mistakes that – no one can follow it and overall it just looks messy and bad yeah i get it i won't post it yeah that's happened but that's really rough (laughs) yeah it is really rough i think that i mean we get so much love so we are obviously so thankful for that but when you do get those negative comments you're kind of like why am i even doing this i know but then you're also like i need a job too (laughs) (laughs) I know it is easy for like the couple comments that are negative to outweigh the many positive ones Mm -hmm. sometimes we can talk about some specific videos we have a little bit of a list here of things that maybe went astray (laughs) yeah but again like those came most of them came back full circle and like we redid them and then the video did really well that just shows you that people like I I don't think that people would watch the video so we would like We would do a DIY, and usually in that video, we wouldn't be like, oh, this didn't work out. It Mm -hmm. just maybe didn't look as good as we thought, and maybe we're just kind of like, 
oh, like, it looks okay, but, like, whatever. We blush over it. Mm -hmm. Brush over it? We definitely don't blush over it. We brush (laughs) over it. Um, And then down the road, I think, I don't know whose idea this was or where it came up, but it was like, let's redo our some DIYs that, you know, maybe people called us out for in the comments and they were like, this wasn't the best. Or we were like, we could definitely do something better or we figured out a new method since then. Um, So, like, you did a boot tray. Yep. That, I redid that one. Yeah, you redid a brute tray. I've redone terrazzo. Um, we redid a hollow mirror um, from That Cost How Much series. Um, but those ones, like, I, I liked doing that video because I honestly agreed with people yeah. on those things. Or a lot of them were self-admitted. Like, I don't think people maybe would remember specifically that I didn't like the boot tray. But I admitted that, like, yeah. I didn't like how this turned out, so I'm going to redo it. Or we knew that the terrazzo didn't work as well, so we redid it. Well, I, I did it, but in a painting way. I didn't end up doing it in a... Yeah, in the hollow mirror, I think you guys all told us that it didn't work, and we agreed with you that it didn't work that well. Yeah, and people were like, try this other method, and we're like, yeah, cool, that sounds good. But I wonder, I wonder why people liked watching that video. Like, what is the the psychology behind that i think it was satisfactory especially for the ones that people had personal critiques about they're probably like yes like i'm being listened to maybe right it's not like oh they failed like that's also possible people just want to see you know like us admit that we aren't perfect and that we've messed up before we human especially in a diy channel but the harder ones to talk about are the diys that we think we did a good job on or people don't know the full story and then we get critiqued on those oh my gosh well let me talk about Gabby DiMartino's bedroom makeover. I have never gotten so much hate in my entire life. And I feel like it was all directed to me because it was a style selected episode where it's like Becky comes up with a design and I come up with a design and my design was chosen. But also guys like, oh my God. Every time we do a style selected episode, people are always like, how can you make the person choose? I like this bedroom. I like this design, not not this design. You guys always choose Kelsey's designs or like sometimes people are like, you always choose Becky's. And it's like, no, literally we've gone through them and they're like pretty much even. Also, you guys need to know that at the end of the day, like the final thing is very collaborative. Yeah. Like sure, the very base two ideas are separate. Like, we do plan them on our own without looking at each other's designs. But when it comes down to, like, actually, okay, we, we're going to do this one, like, we're very collaborative. Yeah. Like, I help Kelsey, like, make all of the ideas come to life. Like, there's nothing that ever I'm like, I hate this whole thing. <laughs> Why like, am I doing this? I don't want to help you make it. No, like, at the end of the day, the, the room we're working on is something that we both think is good. And yeah. we both like. Yeah. So we actually, like, we are getting too in sync that for Nikki's room, Nikki's um, same thing like style selected we did gabby's makeover this is not gabby hannah this is um gabby and nikki twins this is a (laughs) little bit further back um this was like in march but when we did nikki's room literally i was working on my design and becky and i don't share our designs until we're done because we don't want to influence each other and that's just because we're like we're both really creative people we both have really good ideas um so sometimes it's fun to like kind of come up with a whole idea yourself because Mm -hmm. everything that we do is collaborative. So Style Selected is kind of like the one series where we can kind of do something on our own unless it's like you're working, you're doing something for your own house. Yes, but but usually, yeah. But pretty much everything else we do, it's kind of like we are always working together and we're either compromising or just being like super collaborative. So Style Selected is the one thing where it's like, ooh, I get to really think up an idea and Becky gets to really think up an idea. And there's always, even after we come up with the ideas, there's like little shifts because the person who get, who's getting the room always wants like small changes. So in the end, it's always like even a little bit more different from what we originally thought. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I was working on my design in the office and we don't usually share them, but Becky saw it like on my computer screen and she was like, oh, I thought you had my design pulled up. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, my design for Nikki's room looks exactly like that. We both put the bed in the middle of the room. We both had like a circular carpet. And then Mm -hmm. obviously because it's 70s, we both had the same color scheme. It was actually insane. And I was like, do we present her like two of the exact same rooms and becky's like no one of us needs to change our design so i was like okay fine so i like put my bed against the wall and did some different things because we couldn't present her the same ideas oh you know it would be a fun video i was just thinking about this like the original plans for all these rooms because (laughs) even nikki's room like the original plan that we had both come up with essentially what we did was not that plan no it was a different color scheme a different layout Mm -hmm. just because we wanted her to like it 
Um, so we switched it up a little bit, but it would be fun. Yeah, I remember we, we were in a hotel room in New York and we had presented her the two designs and then she liked one, but then she was like, I still want some changes because mm-hmm. like the furniture was like wood and she would rather white furniture. So it's like from there, yeah, I'm just like outing the way we film Style Selective, but whatever. I think it's interesting. Podcast squad. Po- what is our podcast fam called? Oh, good call. Whoa. Pod squad. Pod squad. <laughs> I love it. Vlog fam and pod squad. Love Ugh. it. Love that (laughs) love that um but yeah like obviously they decide which room they want in advance and then on the day we're just kind of like can you pick again which one you like the best (laughs) um because we need to like order furniture and stuff that Mm -hmm. takes weeks and we don't film them over weeks we film them over days yeah so i guess circling back to (laughs) gabby's room um, yes yeah i your design was definitely something like we because okay words um if you know Gabby, her style is like very specific. Yeah. So we our initial designs were actually very similar, but like slight changes. Yours was more silver, mine was more gold. Like literally in that Becky and I talked about this. We were like, how do we make these different? Because the room is not very big. We know the key pieces she wants, which is like a vanity, a mirror, a bed. Like we you can't get too creative there as far as like what's gonna go in the room. So we actually talked about it. We were like how are you going to do your room? Like, what's your general idea? Just so that we're not doing the exact same thing Mm -hmm. like we just did for Nikki's. (laughs) Yeah. So, like, I was fully on board with Kelsey's design, too. So, I mean, you want to talk more about, like, the specific things that people had beef with? Yeah. Well, I don't even know. Okay. Also, it's, like, a new audience is coming over, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, that was a a collab and we're getting – we're bringing over Nikki and Gabby's audience. So, it's kind of, like, I don't know if their audience is just kind of, like – they don't know who these two girls are. They don't like the room design. But also when people were picking, pointing out things that like I already knew about. Like they're like, we had sconces up on the wall, right? Um, and there's like a cord going down. It's like, well, yeah, they're in a rental house. I'm not rewiring because A, I don't know how to do that. B, they don't have the budget for it. C, again, it's a rental home. You're not like wiring in a sconce. And then I guess the other option is just not to put up a sconce. But I was like... No, I think a little, like, small wire looks okay here. Plus, they were clear cords. They weren't, like, black. Yeah. It was kind of the best thing you could do besides drilling into the wall. Yeah, and then it's, like, I know, like, lighting. Trust me, I weigh those pros and cons. I'm, like, yeah, there's going to be a sconce on the wall, and there's going to be a a cord hanging down. Or I cannot put up a sconce, but I think a sconce is really the vibe. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, I weigh those things out, and I'm, like, from her, like, pictures, like, artwork is not really a thing Um, and I don't think it would really like serve the wall as well. I don't know. It's just like, I thought about these things and then people are like, oh, the headboard, like the headboard, like looks a little small for the bed. It's like, yeah, because fabric only comes in a certain size. And also we're trying to like tuft a headboard. Like if somebody's making a headboard from scratch, like that can take you days. Mm -hmm. We were doing this in like one day. We're not even from our own country. So it's not like I could like pre-make it, which sometimes we do for, um like stuff like this we'll make it in our office and then we'll bring it um to install but yeah it's like I I knew I was like stressing at the at the store about that I was like it's gonna be like a little bit smaller and then we were talking about this and we're like weighing pros and cons and I'm like do I do I turn the fabric on its side and then add a seam and then we're like yeah but we don't think that's gonna look good like what's gonna work look better a seam or just like a slightly smaller headboard And then obviously I just like I'm not going to talk about those things in the video, which we have learned over the years, actually, that if we talk about a problem in the video, that it will ease up the negative reaction that we will get. Like, it's it's so crazy that we have had to learn these things. Like, we know how to manage our audience that if we if we say like, oh, I know this doesn't look good. Here's my reasoning behind it and why then we're not going to get as many negative comments. But it's like, if we don't say anything about it, then people are like, oh, let me tell you. Like, I'm going to introduce you to something that you did wrong. And I actually, like, I really hate it. I guess there's a good aspect to it where it's, like, maybe making me more of, like, a quote-unquote woke person. But (laughs) when we go down, sit down and, like, plan our videos, like, every thing we come up with almost is like okay well what are people gonna say like what can they pick apart about this video yeah like what have we used that they don't like or what are we making that they don't like and I like it's it's so bad like it's such a negative outlook to have on what should be a really fun just creative chill process yeah but the internet's just like become that way and there is a fine line between like just putting out whatever you want without getting critiques 
and getting meaningful critiques because I don't think that we should be putting out content that's like, I don't care what people say. Like, you know what I mean? It's nice to be held to a high standard. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's super flattering because I see other people do the exact same thing as us or, you know, don't consider the effect on the environment or fast fashion or something and they don't hear anything. I know. Anything about it. These massive hauls at all these fast fashion stores. Yeah. Are, like, even the slime videos is so wasteful. That's just going, like, in the garbage or down the drain after it like kills me kills me and like people do not get any hate or any negative criticisms and then like we obviously don't do those because that doesn't align with who we are but if we do something that's even like slightly not okay by like one person's standards then we get we get told which yeah again it's like something i'm kind of thankful for in a way because we are held to such a high standard so i it's super flattering but it can be difficult sometimes Mm -hmm. it can be difficult i guess on the creative process sometimes to have that weighing on you always yeah um (laughs) (laughs) i'm just like thinking of all like it happens every week oh the bamboo arc bag do you remember that yeah that one like i the comments were what that it wasn't practical yeah um, which I guess I get, but I think the challenge of that video was more just to see if we could make something that was like this designer bag. Which, can I say that you probably didn't say that, but if you had said, I just want to see if I can make it. If you say that one line, then all of a sudden all that hate that you would have gotten, gone. I know. Which is like, I don't know. People just need to chill out. <laughs> like if, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to get too ranty, but... Yeah. It's hard. It's hard sometimes. Like, on things like, even today, we're filming a Halloween video, and this is day four of working on the video. Yeah. And I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be really good, but I think people don't realize how long and how many hours go into doing things, especially for rooms. Like, we are, the team you see on vlogs, like, that's it. Like, a lot of other channels have behind-the-scenes teams, or they hire in, like, extra help that they don't talk about. Yeah. Um, and that's why it does seem st- like stuff is easier, stuff is faster, or they have more extra time to do other things, like vlog more interesting things. But, like, no, it's just us doing it all. Like, the reason why we can't hardwire sconces as easily is because we're not HGTV. We yeah. don't have, like, an electrician on staff or, like, I don't know, a full-on makeover crew that comes in when we don't want to be on camera anymore. Also, we're trying to be, like, relatable. Like, <laughs> these videos are for an audience. Like, we need to find that balance between making the room look beautiful and to what the person wants it to look like um, and fits their style but also like what's kind of doable for both us and for the audience who's trying to gain inspiration like if we're hardwiring sconces people might be like yeah well I can't do that so I'm not even gonna try but you know what is easy like putting a couple screws in the wall yes and then running a cord and plugging it in yeah, I think that's something that we try and stand by a little bit is in our videos is always making sure that there's some sort of like learning aspect to it, even if it is a more fun, chill video. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, we're like a DIY channel. We want to teach you how to do things yourself. We want to like inspire and educate. And keep learning ourselves. Like, oh my gosh, the day we stop learning is the day I quit my job <laughs> <laughs> because I could not if we if that was what it was. Yeah. So I think, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, like even I, we we didn't get to it this week. So in the calendar, there was a, t- a video called DIYing Tiny Things, mm-hmm. which I think came was the idea was come up with. The idea was conceived, I don't know, while I wasn't here one day maybe. And like we didn't get to it yet because we we're working on the Halloween costumes and it's taking us longer. Usually we film two videos a week plus a vlog, but these Halloween costumes have just taken a little while so we didn't get to it this week but I was like eventually when we were starting to like plan that because I don't think it's planned out yet I was going to be like wait what is that because I wasn't here when the idea was I can tell you what it is okay because I'm like I'm like are we learning things like it kind of sounds like what is it um it came and I think you were there at Uh, Wendy's place yes at Wendy's I remember that she had a bunch of funny (laughs) things like funny small things like a tiny shopping cart a tiny flower pot and I think we were just like, wouldn't it be funny if we tried to DIY things that were small? Yeah. Like, that was it. <laughs> that's, okay. That's a lot of our videos, how they start. Like, that would be fun. And then we have to flush them out later. Yeah. I think that one needs to be flushed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what tiny things? What is their purpose? 
True, true. And, and then, how can we teach people I through, know. through this? And I know, like, I don't, don't hold me to the high standard that, and, like, go back through our videos and be like, what is the, like, genius information I'm learning from this video? Like, some of it is, like, we're redoing our backdrop, and it's kind of just, like, simple and fun. But, like, I guess the key word is purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So even though that one may not have, like, a crazy informative DIY, it still had a very strong purpose, which was yeah. that we needed to refresh our backdrop. And, like yeah purpose yeah like little things too like we talked about a color scheme for fall that's really cool mm -hmm. that might inspire someone we like showed how to use what well, we kind of loosely shot i use like an electronic cutter machine to make our logo yeah which was really cool and we got to shout out some cool art from our viewers which was really cool. yeah so i guess it's like when we're if we're diying tiny things what is the purpose and what is the meaning which there definitely could be but it's like we need to find that otherwise i can't be passionate about it <laughs> <laughs> deep 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 okay so deep i mean um the other thing i guess i wanted to just chat about this has all been youtube but the instagram the pressures of instagram do you yeah. ever find that to be a thing yeah i really do have we talked about this before i think we have a little bit yeah i I really live in a place where I'm like, I kind of just wish sometimes that this wasn't a thing. But then I think about all the good things that come from it. Like right now people are sending me DMs like, I want to apply for that job posting that we just put up. And I'm like, okay, true. Like people are interested in this or um, I don't know, just like the knowing that people like think about me when they see a raccoon is like the sweetest <laughs> um or i don't know different events and experiences people will send me information about um or getting podcast recommendations mm -hmm. or sharing my passion for not buying new clothing for the rest of the year which really like, realistically is gonna be like the rest of my life but anyways um yeah i think that there's so many good things that come from it but then also i'm just like having that like little stress and it's always there it's like that little itch at the back yeah of your mind that's like posting or like check it check it it's like i hate that that is something that i don't think we need to live with and we are part of the last little bit of the generation that didn't fully grow up with it like we only got instagram i mean i personally got it in like second year college mm -hmm. i remember like sitting upstairs in our apartment on that leopard print couch <laughs> and like downloading Instagram and posting my first Instagram. Like, what is this? So that's like 2011-ish, maybe, maybe 12. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like we didn't, I didn't get it till I was an adult. But some people have this from so young. I know, which is hard. And like I find it hard too because I really like the photography aspect mm -hmm. of it. Like I like taking photos, I like editing photos, but then I, if I don't, post them somewhere it's kind of like is that art dead like mm -hmm. if nobody sees it mm -hmm. which is a good question and then I, I don't know I feel like Instagram's the best place to put it but Instagram a, as a whole is really hard because like the pressure to post all the time so it's like do you have enough s things to post I guess that are like meaningful because yeah I I don't know I I do enjoy accounts that are just like random stuff and not everything has to be so deep and have a purpose, but I don't know. I just, I, I think I get most caught up on the caption part of Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like I have a bunch of photos banked on my phone that are really nice and I want to post them, but I'm like, what do I say about this? Because I feel like trying to sum up a picture in a caption like almost belittles the photo a little bit mm -hmm. and makes it less meaningful. Because mm -hmm. um, like, what do you say? I don't know. I, I never have anything good or interesting to say that I want to say. Um, and that overwhelms me a little bit. And then if you don't post a caption, like, you know, you don't get enough engagement. Yeah. Photos with questions or like anything really get way more engagement. Yeah. But also like, why do we care about that? I don't know. It's a good question. I think. I mean, some accounts will care about it because they make money off of Instagram, but our personal Instagrams and even our main Instagram, like, I feel like our main income source as far as like brand deals is... YouTube. is youtube mm -hmm. so it's like like why do we care about that engagement yeah i don't know i think like i tell myself it it matters because if the instagrams grow as a whole then it's great for the business as a yeah. whole but is that really true 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's in Canada still. They did this really interesting thing where they they took away um, the numbers. numbers of likes on photos. Yeah. I don't know if that's staying. I don't know if it's going international. Um, but yeah, when you scroll through the feed on Instagram, you don't see the likes that other people got on their photos. I know. You know, it's funny. Actually, I was on my ins- my personal Instagram and then I saw a Sorry Girls photo and I was like, oh, I wonder how many likes this photo got and I clicked it and it was like only the sorry girls can see how many likes this photo got and I was like I'm not on the right account so I couldn't (laughs) see but I thought it was funny because it's like that I am the sorry girl (laughs) that's funny I don't even think that's the thing that like even mattered to me though I think it's like the frequency of posting that stresses me out the most oh yeah when you're like I haven't posted in a week yeah because some of my favorite accounts post like every single day and all the photos are beautiful and I love that for them and it's like I would love to be on that level too, but just like keeping up with it, man, it's stressful. I know. And I don't know why that is because at the end of the day, I'd say like I enjoy it, but there's something in it that's just like. I was gonna say, I feel like when things are stressful, we change them, right? I mean, that's what I do. When I'm like stressed, I'm like, what can I change here? Mm-hmm. What's what's not working for me? Maybe I just gotta drop captions. A captionless account coming to you soon. Wow. Or like, so, One Instagram account I really like is Allegra Shaw. Mm -hmm. She does um, fashion. She's from Toronto. And I feel like her feed used to be a lot more like curated, the quote unquote perfect girl. Yep. And I think that um, she's definitely recently like shifted from that. And I think she even mentioned it. Like this is a little while ago now. Um, But she was just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to be doing some other things now. Like they're not all photos of her, which – like we kind of know that if it's a photo of you it does well yes um versus you know like a random landscape or something Mm -hmm. because also they just don't know people don't know who's posting that like sometimes you're not reading yeah i actually never read i just i I literally know people by like the filters they use so funny (laughs) your filter identity (laughs) um yeah so like she'll kind of post a little bit of everything and not everything's perfect and sometimes it's like just the feet instead of like a whole outfit when I feel like maybe a year ago or um a year and a half ago that would have been like a no you have to post like always a face always like a full outfit Mm -hmm. never just like these random other shots and some things are not hers like they're just like inspo and like interesting pretty photos and I'm like yes I like this I like where this is going that's cool I like that a lot yeah but it's also I guess overall whether it's Instagram or something else in your life you just can't have all of your like happiness or your worth or Mm -hmm. any part of your life fully rely on one thing yes definitely that's in business that's in like your personal relationships like you can't just have like your one significant other be like your one and only you know what I mean the people are like I'll die without you it's like we got to keep living no matter what without the gram or without the hus gram (laughs) I I don't know where that was going. It was less cool than I thought it'd be. I guess overall, like, I think for us, the pros for posting on all these different platforms outweigh the the cons, Mm -hmm. which is why I think we continue to do it and we enjoy it and find worth in it. Yeah. And I hope it continues to keep growing that way and maybe one day it's all pros, but who knows? (laughs) Yeah, I think maybe, (laughs) I didn't realize this still right now, but circling back to the whole, we want to post YouTube videos with purpose. Um, it's like how much does that need to relate to Instagram too? Because yeah, I think it is fine to post an Instagram photo without a caption and without being super deep. Because mm-hmm. I do see accounts that are super deep, and you know what? I think that they're more fake than just not putting a caption. Because oh. now they are digging deep. Oh my god! One time I was sitting beside a guy on a plane. Tea is coming. <laughs> the tea is hot. <laughs> it's thirsty. Um, I was sitting beside a guy on a plane, and he must have been some kind of like fitness motivational like instagram or whatever and he's just sitting there p- pounding out captions i kid you not oh my gosh like <sighs> what like, give me an example oh my god they like i mean i wasn't like fully creeping but they're definitely like motivational like every day is a new chance for a journey <laughs> and all it takes is you to accomplish it you know what i mean yeah. shit like that just like the same thing being said in like a bunch of different ways and just like constantly like in his notes app just being like 
new caption, new caption, new caption. Wow. And it's not like he's building a social plan. Like there's no like photo. And then this, it's like you can tell he just probably like takes photos copy and then paste. copy pastes the caption with the photo. And like to me, that is way, 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 way more fake than just like putting up no caption. Yeah. I feel that. So it's like, and then, but then it comes back to like the whole purpose thing. And is it meaningful? And then I'm just like, I don't know. I give up. Bye-bye now. I think that's, yeah, that's what maybe has me the most confused is I get YouTube. I know what I'm doing on there. I know my, like, the niche. The niche or like, your, what do they call it in America? What? Your night. Oh, not your niche. Your do they call it something else? Oh, yeah. They call niche something different. Oh Remember, we God. looked this up when yeah. we found out about the decals and the decals. The decals. I don't decals and niche, decals. Though. Oh, niche. Oh, uh, niche. Sorry, Americans, but niche, like, it sounds like. Wrong. It sounds like a bug that I need to, like, flick <laughs> off of me. Like a tick? Like a, ni- a niche? We got our niche up in Canada, and I know what I'm doing there, but I think Instagram, I'm just like, ha- like, I, like I really don't care on one spectrum. And on the other side of it, it's like, yeah, I want these photos to be like beautiful in representation and I don't want to make them like stupid by adding a bad caption. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like finding that middle ground. I don't know what it is. But yeah, I do think there's a place obviously for motivational accounts. Like sure, those can be great. But I, I'm not that person, so I can't pretend to be that. And maybe every single post doesn't need to be this no. motivational quote that you came up while you're sitting in like the 30th row of an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> and and back to what I started at the beginning, not every post needs to be like, okay, real talk here. We all have our bad days. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a place for all of that stuff. But when it becomes too much of it. It's fatiguing. It's hard. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. I think, I don't know. That's my thoughts on all of this. Is posting is hard, y'all? <laughs> posting is hard. Posting be like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um Let's move on to an email. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, I, did I not round that up properly? No, I just got in the feels and I was like just thinking. So I think an email would be great right now. Let's just have like a moment of silence for thinking, <laughs> of pondering. Oh, speaking of emails, though, I think because we're pondering this, this this yeah. is a really good episode that I'd love you guys to send in your thoughts about Yeah, um, for us to respond to in future podcasts. So if you have thoughts about posting and all of that stuff that we are kind of just trying to word vomit in this episode, email us at podcast at the sorry Yeah. Um, to tell us your thoughts because I'm, I'm just confused, guys. I'm confused. Okay. Speaking of emails, this one's from Valerie. And they say, Hello, I originally found you on YouTube. Love the DIY inspo. And now I love listening to your podcasts while I run. Ooh. Wow, a podcast runner. That's so cool. Hi, Valerie. If you're running right now, keep going. You're doing it to anybody running right now. You got this. There's your motivational quote that I came up with on the spot, as they should be. <laughs> oh, my God. This just gave me the weirdest throwback. I used to have the Nike running app, and, but yeah. it was a collab with Ellie Goulding, who's my fave. Oh, shit. And she had, like, they had recordings of her voice that and would she was literally like, say the same thing. She's like, Becky, you're doing amazing. <laughs> you this sound is like not- Adele. <laughs> 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 yeah, basically like that. Oh, Anyways. my God. There's so many British accents. I can't. Carry on. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, I just listened to the one y'all did about relationships and I want to share something my spouse and I recently started doing based on a friend's recommendation. We use percentages to help us decide what to do. For example, if we are not wanting to go to eat, but we aren't sure where, or or sorry, if we are wanting to go to eat, but we're not sure where, we would say something like, I'm 35% pizza and 65% tacos. (laughs) And the other person might say, I'm 51% tacos and 49% Chinese. It has really helped us as indecisive humans figure out what to do when we, it has really helped us as indecisive humans to figure out what to do when we aren't coming to a decision quickly. Thanks for sharing your creativity with the world. I love that. Game changer. Plus it like quickly just gets it out there if you're not into something, but like you could do it, but you're You're on the fence. I'm like 5%. I could go get ice cream right now, but I'm like 85% set on this couch. And then you suck at math. So you're just like, the rest is just shh. (laughs) <laughs> do you have to do proper percentages? That's yeah, a question call. I have. Good call. 
Oh my God, that is so amazing. Thank you, Valerie, for sending that idea. That is genius. That is quite genius. I might start using that. So thank I'm you. like 60%, I'm like 80% YouTube, 10% Instagram, and 10% IDGF. <laughs> <laughs> actually put in pinterest there pinterest is my newfound love for since i bought a house oh i love pinterest to Dude. my core i know but it's also like bad because i'm like is my house gonna look like this yes <laughs> sorry girls team here yes hi hi, hi. <laughs> sorry girls guys i was thinking about it in the shower this morning like about the series the house makeover series mm -hmm. and then also i just get stressed because i'm hiring a contractor and i'm like should i be doing it myself that's what the real stress is. Mm. Yeah, but some things, I mean, we Dude, I can't. are out of our... Yeah, I don't know how to pour range. concrete and re-level a basement floor. No, me neither. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think, no, there's definitely times where we need to let the experts step in. True, I don't want, like, a botched house. Mm -mm. They're like, if I flick the light switch, the upstairs laundry machine turns on. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> nailed, nailed the wiring. Okay, <laughs> wow, great idea. I mean, these percentages every day of my life. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thanks so much for listening to this podcast, guys. Make sure you follow it on all your podcast listening um, apps and services. And also, we're on YouTube now. Yeah. YouTube.com slash story life to see the video and of leave, this podcast. And uh, leave a rate on your podcast app that you listen to it too because we haven't said that in a while and then i was going through recently the rates and we have a lot of great rates but they're very old mm, i yes. was like we need some season two rates you know this feels like old school youtube rate comment subscribe rate comment subscribe <laughs> yeah i was like comment sometimes works all right see you next week guys see you next week bye bye now bye i'm 100 percent bye <laughs> <laughs>